thank the Almighty Father for giving us good health so that we can bring to you the voice of hope. This is the New Life Program coming to you from Adventist World Radio. And I'm your presenter, Tileno Diam. Thank you for staying tuned. Sometimes one normally feels hot when sleeping at night or when he or she experiences fever. This type of momentary sensation of heat is known as hot flash. Musavi will be telling us more about that. Later on, Steve Rundu will also be joining us in the Stewardship Series to tell us about God's ordained opportunity. For now, let us listen to some inspirational music. Keep it Adventist World Radio. This is the voice of hope coming to you from Adventist World Radio. Let us now turn our attention to Musavi as she educates us more concerning hot flashes. Stay tuned. Hello listener. Welcome to our program, Health Nuggets. I am your presenter, Musavi Muteshi. Today, I would like to talk about a medical condition that is common among adult women, hot flashes. This condition is not deadly, but symptoms of its episodes are very real and they are distressing to the women who experience them. Hot flashes are a sudden feeling of warmth felt intensely over the face, neck and chest. Episodes usually last a few minutes. The skin may appear red and blotchy, just as if the woman were blushing. Episodes are frequently accompanied by drenching sweat. They may leave the woman feeling chilled as they subside. They can occur a few times a week or several times a day, and they can occur at night, interrupting sleep. Most women who experience hot flashes will have repeated episodes for a year or longer. The exact cause of hot flashes is not known, but evidence suggests factors that affect the function of a woman's thermostat. A woman's level of estrogen, her female sex hormone, lowers during menopause, the time of life when their menstrual periods stop. 
that decrease may disrupt her ability to regulate the temperature of her body. A low estrogen level by itself doesn't seem to cause the episodes, as young girls with low estrogen levels don't experience hot flashes. Instead, the sudden withdrawal of estrogen, which happens during menopause, appears to be the trigger. Although menopause is the most common time for hot flashes to occur, other factors can also cause them. Two factors that are associated with an increased risk are smoking and obesity. If you don't exercise, you're more likely to develop hot flashes. Additionally, an overactive thyroid gland can increase a woman's risk. Women who are under enormous amounts of stress and those who take the vitamin niacin or medicines for depression, high blood pressure, breast cancer, or anxiety can experience episodes that are unrelated to menopause. Even foods such as hot peppers contain chemicals that can trigger episodes. There are also protective factors. Japanese and Chinese women are less likely to develop the condition than women of European and African descent. Episodes should lessen with time. If they do not improve, they may be alerting the woman to an unsuspected medical problem. If her thyroid is overactive, the hormone it produces can stimulate the brain's blood vessels or nerves, causing hot flashes. So can a spinal cord injury or tumors of the pancreas or kidney. Doctors can usually make an accurate diagnosis of menopausal hot flashes based on a description of the symptoms alone. If hot flash symptoms are particularly bothersome, a variety of treatments are available. The most effective treatments for the woman to have replacement of her female sex hormone estrogen. Unfortunately, taking this hormone can increase her risk of developing some significant health problems in the future. It has also been associated with an increased risk of developing cancer of the uterus, assuming she still has her uterus in place, an increased risk of breast cancer, and of developing blood clots. Before starting estrogen replacement therapy for menopausal symptoms, a woman should review her risk factors with her doctor, and they should weigh the benefits of symptom relief against those risks. So, what can a woman do without taking estrogen replacement therapy? If the hot flashes she experiences are mild, she may be able to manage them with lifestyle adjustments. These adjustments start with keeping cool. Slight increases in a body's core temperature can trigger episode, so dress in layers. That will allow you to remove outer clothing when you feel too warm. Open a window or use a fan or air conditioner to keep air flowing. Lower the room temperature if you can. If you feel a hot flash coming on, sip a cool drink. Next, pay attention to what you eat and drink. Hot and spicy foods, coffee and alcohol can all trigger episodes, so identify your triggers and avoid those triggering foods or drinks. Then, relax. Some women find relief from mild hot flashes through exercise, meditation, relaxation or other stress reducing techniques even if these approaches don't stop your episodes completely they may provide other benefits such as easing the sleep disturbances that tend to occur with menopause finally since smoking is linked to an increased incidence of hot flashes if you smoke stop you may reduce your hot flashes as well as your risk of many serious health conditions such as heart disease, stroke and cancer. Many women have turned to eating a variety of specific foods they have been told that help to curb hot flash episodes. Some plants are known to contain estrogen compounds that are similar to the estrogens found in humans. Soy, red clover and many other plants contain these plant estrogens and women in Asian countries where soy is a regular part of the diet are less likely to report hot flashes and other menopausal symptoms than our women in other parts of the world. Dietary supplements commonly used to treat menopausal symptoms include these plant estrogens. Unfortunately, 
scientific studies in which either soy or other herbal supplements such as black cohosh, ginseng and kava were given to women suffering hot flashes have so far failed to demonstrate effectiveness. For most women, hot flashes fade gradually within a few years. So if you suffer episodes of hot flashes that are mild, you may not require estrogen replacement. Pay attention to your activities and what you eat and drink at the times your hot flashes are triggered. By avoiding those triggers, you may be able to stop the episodes. Current medical recommendations for the treatment of severely bothersome hot flashes are to use the lowest effective dose of estrogen replacement for the shortest amount of time needed to relieve the symptoms. Health Nugget is written by Dr. Richard Uckel, a medical doctor working in the United States. The medical views expressed in this program are his and may differ for your particular health needs. If you need medical advice, please consult a medical professional in your area. Thank you for listening. Thank you for staying put to Adventist World Radio, the voice of hope. I'm your presenter, Tileno Diambu. We would like to hear your views, comments, and suggestions concerning this program. Do so by writing to the producer, Adventist World Radio, P.O. Box 42276, code 00100, Nairobi, Kenya. Our email address is awrnairobi at eau. Dot Adventist dot org. I'm trusting, only trusting in Jesus day by day. I feel His presence near while pressing on my way. My soul is full of glory, and this my song shall be. I love my blessed Savior because He first loved me. I love Him, I love Him because He first loved me. I trust Him, I trust Him, wherever I may be. My soul is full of glory, I sing because I'm free. I love my blessed Savior, because He first loved me. I'm trusting, only trusting, in Jesus every hour, who saves me by His mercy and keeps me by His power. I'll publish His salvation wherever I may be. With all my heart I love Him, because He first loved me. I love Him, I love Him, because He first loved me. I trust Him, I trust Him, wherever I may be. My soul is full of glory, I sing because I'm free. I love my blessed Savior because He first loved me. I'm trusting, only trusting, my Savior's hand to guide. I know His grace sufficient and has for not beside. My soul is on the mountain, my home beyond the sea. Oh, bless the Lord, I love Him because He first loved me. I love Him, I love Him, because He first loved me. I trust Him, I trust Him, wherever I may be. My soul is full of glory, I sing because I'm free. I love my blessed Savior, because He first loved me. Hope that you are enjoying today's New Life program coming to you from Adventist World Radio, The Voice of Hope, with me, Tileno Diambo. Steve Rundu will pick up from here with the stewardship series as he talks about God's ordained opportunity. Be blessed. God ordained opportunity. Our key text this day comes from the book of Ruth. Chapter 3, reading from verses 1 to verses 13. I will read excerpts of it. One day Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, shall I not try to find a home for you where you will be well provided for? Is not Boaz with those servant girls who have been a kinsman of ours? 
Tonight you will be winnowing barley on the threshing floor. Wash and perfume yourself and put on your best clothes. Then go down to the threshing floor, but don't let him know you are there until he has finished eating and drinking. When he lies down, not the place where he is lying, then go and uncover his feet and lie down. He will tell you what to do. I will do whatever you say, Ruth answered. So she went down to the threshing floor and did everything her mother-in-law told her to do. When Boaz had finished eating and drinking and was in good spirits, he went over to lie down at the far end of the grain pile. Ruth approached quietly and covered his feet and lay down. In the middle of the night something startled the man, and he turned and discovered a woman lying at his feet. Who are you? he asked. I am your servant, Ruth, she replied. Spread the corner of your garment over me, since you are a kinsman redeemer. The Lord bless you, my daughter, he replied. This kindness is greater than that which you showed earlier. You have not run after the younger men, whether rich or poor. And now, my daughter, don't be afraid. I will do for you all you ask. All my fellow townsmen know that you are a woman of noble character. Although it is true that I am near of kin, there is a kinsman redeemer nearer than I. Stay here for the night, and in the morning, if he wants to redeem, good, let him redeem. But if he is not willing, as surely as the Lord lives, I will do it. Lie here until morning. Ruth's actions must have taken all her courage. Imagine setting out at night, sleeping to the threshing floor unnoticed, lying at the feet of your sleeping benefactor, waiting for him to wake up and respond one way or the other to your requests. When Boaz does awaken, she basically asks Boaz to marry her. In their stewardship Bible study notes, for Ruth three generous giving points out of the similarity of Ruth's request to Old Testament language depicting God's hiding Israel under his wing. And the words echo the words of Boaz to Ruth upon meeting her in the fields. Boaz responds graciously to Ruth's request, commending Ruth's faithfulness to Naomi and promising to use his position as Naomi's relative to bring Ruth's security. This provision in Old Testament law in Leviticus chapter 25 verses 25 to 28 enabled the poor and dispossessed to fall back on family members to help them regain property lost to financial disaster. For Ruth herself, security was a matter of gaining social status as a married woman. Notice that Boaz doesn't ask Ruth to wait for his decision, doesn't scurry off to the house to agonize into the wee hours of our list of pros and cons. It goes without saying that we as Christians need to make informed decisions. But when the script spirit prompts, as we may assume he did with Boaz, we are to act without hesitation. Pastor and generosity consultant Brian Cluth makes this point in a brief discussion of the etymology of the English word opportunity. Hundreds of years ago, when people mainly lived Near the oceans, the word opportunity was coined. It came from the time when ships needed to wait until the tide was in before heading out to sea. Otherwise, the ship would run around the ground. In the Latin language, the words ob potu describe the perfect moment when time and tide converged for a ship to get underway. Into every person's life come some God-ordained opportunities. You will know it's the right time when the urgent, life-changing need, something that has eternal and significant value, converges with your ability. At just the right moment, urgency and ability come together. And at that moment, exact, you have the opportunity to fulfill a divine purpose God intended for you. It is time for you and your congregation to move forward in some special way. As you reflect back, on the journey you've been on, how is God working in your heart and the lives of others to move out into waters of faith and service for His glory? When have you been convicted by the Spirit of to offer assistance to someone in need? Do you view promptings from the Spirit as an unwelcome responsibility in an already an overcrowded schedule, or do you see it as an opportunity? or even a privilege.
How can you be more open to the Spirit's gentle nudges? How can you be more open to the Spirit's gentle nudges? What changes do you need to make in your life so that you can better respond to opportunities presented by God? Let us pray. My Father who art in heaven, I come to you this day, Lord, to ask you to be more kind to me. Show me and open my eyes so that I can see the God-ordained opportunities in my life. Allow me, Lord, to be open to the spirits working in my heart this week and in my life. Allow me to know when the Spirit calls and what He calls me to do so that I can act on it, O Lord. I have prayed all these things, trusting and believing in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We have come to the end of today's edition. If you didn't like today's program, tell us what to do to improve our next shows. Send us your comments, views and suggestions by writing to the producer, Adventist World Radio, P.O. Box 42276. Code 00100 Nairobi, Kenya. Our email address is awrnairobi at eau.adventist.org. From the entire production team, we say thank you and be blessed. I have been your host, Tileno Diam.
soul to pass a little jubilant my faith Oh 